Welcome back. We're here with um, Josh Perry, BMX biker champion, um, brain tumor survivor, um, brain trauma survivor. And you were just telling us in the break that, what was it, after a year coming back? Yeah, surgery was April 2010, and this was about July, I believe it was July 2011, Ocean City, Maryland. What happened? So we had a contest back then called the Dew Tour. Um, that's another story. But they built a course on the beach in Ocean City, and it had been a little over a year. And like Dave Mayer said, you do the homework, the test is easy. I was doing the homework. You know, I was practicing every day, training, started learning about nutrition, drinking more water, less sugar, less alcohol, uh, things like that. And I was just ready. And I was, it was just practice. And I was going around one of the lines and the ramps to get the feel for the route I wanted to take during my contest run. And I came up short on this ramp. So I was, it was a six foot ramp and I was about, I think like eight feet above that. And I was coming my back tire tagged and I went straight over the bars to my face, like the left side of my oh, face God. on the flat bottom. So I was about eight feet when my bike hit and I was on top of it straight to the ground. And my friends and the medics on the sidelines, you know, watching, so they heard me snoring as soon as I hit. It was actually on, like, on the perimeter ramps of the, the course. They said I hit so hard, I was snoring instantly. And the medics rolled me over when they got to me. And they said my heart had stopped about 30, 45 seconds. And I actually woke up in the ambulance throwing up, and I just was so confused and in so much pain that I had, like, a huge lump down my right hand, and my knuckle was broken. And I didn't even – I just was like, what happened, you know, throwing up after. <laughs> so uh, that, that was about – 14 months after brain surgery. Oh, God. There are so many pieces to that story people wouldn't understand are important. Like brain surgery all by itself has general anesthesia. People have general anesthesia. So children who have general anesthesia have a higher incidence of learning problems. Adults who have it have a higher incidence of dementia. Um, there's controversy about that. There's studies for and against, but general anesthesia is generally not good for your brain. So we have trauma, we have the tumor, general anesthesia, and then your heart stops. And any form of anoxia where you don't get oxygen to your brain- Because your heart because stops. Your heart stops can damage your brain. Um, so you've got multiple insults. Multiple, and, and your scans show it, but the exciting thing that I want people to really get is when you get serious about brain health that you can very often make it better. Um, but then when did the tumors come back? So that was July 2011. It was September 2012. Just one of the yearly MRIs showed uh, a small, like a blueberry-sized mass in the front and the rear of the same area the, the original tumor was located in. Dr. Friedman said it was due to the uh, complications. Once they got in, the tumor was wrapped around the optic nerve and an artery. And so it was actually six-hour surgery. It was supposed to be like four. And I remember meeting him five years later again, and he just didn't miss a beat. He knew he was like, he remembered everything. And he said it was because of that. So that's when the, um, the two regrowths came back was 2012. So let's just pause for a minute and talk about the impact to society of traumatic brain injury. Um, one of the things that shocked me. So I'm an Army trained psychiatrist. I trained at the Walter Reed Army Medical Center in Washington, D.C. And when I trained in 1982, we had a lot of Vietnam veterans. And so we actually had talked about traumatic brain injury and the impact it could have on your mental health. But I had no idea that literally 40% of the patients that come to Amen Clinics have had a significant traumatic brain injury at some point in their past. It is a major cause of psychiatric illness and nobody knows about it. Um, it's a major cause of anxiety, depression, suicidal ideation, um, ADHD, school failure, drug and alcohol abuse, homelessness, incarceration. Um, when you damage the brain, if everybody, and I think most people believe your brain is involved in everything you do, how you think and feel and act, and how well, you know, Tan and I get, get along. Your brain is involved in everything. If you hurt it, it's going to hurt your ability to be your best self. Yeah, for sure. And you seem pretty healthy and you seem, um, yeah, I, I haven't been there through the whole healing process, obviously. I'm sure there were a lot of ups and downs. 
Um, but you seem like you've taken a very proactive approach to getting well. I've heard you mention several things and, and you seem very purposeful and being purposeful is a big part of it. And, and as I, we mentioned before, you mentioned the falling piece, you know, falling is just part of it and you get back up. And I wanted to touch on that before. Um, we talk about that in martial arts a lot. And for women, that's a, that's a hard thing. We want to be perfectionists and in BMX, maybe you do too, but you can't be. So falling is just a, it's an important part of learning strategy. It's imp- it's like built in you fall. It's not considered failure. It's like, oh, it's just, you only fail if you don't get back up. And that was such a huge awakening for me. It was like, oh, you're supposed to fall. You're just supposed to learn how to get up safely and quickly, right? And move on. And and you learn from it. And that was huge. That was a huge metaphor for me for life. And it was really important. Yeah, for sure. I mean, you said a bunch of things and like that come to mind is I remember, you know, when I first heard uh, Dr. Amy speak at IAN, it was brain envy. And so I remember being on that path and it started with you know, watching a documentary that led me here on, on YouTube and Google and all over the place. And then I found Dr. Perlmutter's book, Brain Brain, mm-hmm. just before I rolled the IAN. And I was like, man, like, I started making massive shifts. And Dr. Amon's work, and then Mark Sisson spoke in there, and mm-hmm. then Dr. Mark Hyman. And I was like, yeah. man, all this stuff makes sense. Um, so it was just like, let's be proactive. I was still in a fearful state. And learning, little, learning a little bit about epigenetics and, you know, the ability we have to make changes with our health. I was like, man, like, let's just keep doing this. But then as I've gone on and I've learned about, you know, mindset being my favorite thing to talk about and really just perspective and context is essential to life. That's, that's one of my biggest beliefs. And my perspective was altered by the first brain tumor. Um, and then it's obviously shifted a lot since then it's progressed. And then you mentioned purpose and a friend of mine told me a story that he was at a job one day before he started his business and the boss was like, Hey, Isaac, are you on self or are you on purpose today? And oh, I love that. Yeah, so I have a bracelet that says off self on purpose. And the That's third good. diagnosis just two years ago was one of those wake up calls that was like, there was no feeling sorry. There was no feeling anything. Of course, it was a little bit of frustration, but it was literally like, what can I do to benefit from this experience? And how can I help people? And that's when I stopped competing it was 2017. Cause I was like, man, like our sport's not that big. It was like NBA, I have a bigger reach, you know, but no one cares if I go compete or not. They just care what I represent. And let's let's take all that energy, time, and focus and put it on purpose to serve and support. And let's create more abundance for everyone. And that's just where my mindset is now. It's like, what can I do to bring value? Instead of hearing people like, how can I, uh, you know, how can I learn this? Or how can you help me? It's like, how can I help you? And in doing so, it's just a byproduct that, you know, more opportunity comes to me, more opportunity to help people. And then just, it's, uh, it's really fascinating how that, your world shifts with these perspectives. It does. Things. Yeah. That's actually fantastic. I love that. Are you on self or are you on purpose? That's fantastic. Um, I really like that. One thing I do when something's going really badly and I've had to train myself, it didn't come naturally, um, train myself to do when something's really bad or I'm really nervous. And, and I love this because what you're describing is what we call the warrior mindset. You have a warrior mindset, not a warrior, but a warrior mindset. And that's really great. Um, what I like to do is I ask myself a series of questions. The minute something's going wrong, it's I I built it in just like I built in, you know, I like the ICU trauma nurse training. It's what can I learn from this? What can I be happy about? What can I be grateful about? And what can I be purposeful with? Right. So when something's really going bad, like if you can, if you can instantly do that, it just instantly shifts your mindset to, oh my God, I can't believe this is happening to me. To what can I be grateful for? What can I learn? What can I, you know, how can I be purposeful? And it's like, it just instantly puts you in that warrior, you know, proactive state of mind. So it's a really important thing, but it takes training, you know? Oh, yeah. yeah, it takes time. It takes if the training is hard, the battle is easy, yeah. right? So when we come back, um, so we've talked a little bit about Josh's story. We've talked about the impact of traumatic brain injury. Now what I want to do in the next, to podcast is talk about, well, what are the big lessons you've learned? What is it that you really want to share and what do you do with it our audience? And what questions might you have for us after you've gone through the evaluation process? I also want to hear when you saw your scan, what that was like. Stay with us. If you're enjoying the Brain Warriors Way podcast, please don't forget to subscribe so you'll always know when there's a new episode. And while you're at it, feel free to give us a review or five-star rating as that helps others find the podcast. If you're considering coming to Amen Clinics or trying some of the brain healthy supplements from BrainMD, you can use the code PODCAST10 
to get a 10% discount on a full evaluation at amenclinics.com or a 10% discount on all supplements at brainmdhealth.com. For more information, give us a call at 855-978-1363.